Hello, everybody. Hello, Spin Sheet fans. I'm Chris Charbonneau. I'm the associate publisher of Spin Sheet Magazine. And uh, I really just want to thank you for showing up today on uh, Friday. Um, it's been sort of a, a weird day, um, but, uh, you know, it's five o'clock. But, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere. More importantly, it's five o'clock right here. So um, anyhow, I just wanted to uh, uh, pop in, say hello, say thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a really cool program today um, on liveaboards. We've got some great guests. And uh, if you've ever wondered about the liveaboards lifestyle, I think we all probably have. Um, and if you're really getting serious about pulling the trigger, uh, this is going to be a great place for you to kind of ask some key questions. Um, it will be um, uh, it's a good opportunity to kind of get to know some people and to uh, to figure out you know if this lifestyle is for you. Um, first off, before we get started, I'll bring in our uh, our host and, and guests here in a moment. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors. Um, if you uh, you probably know, Spin Sheet is a is a free magazine, um, and uh, if it weren't for our advertisers, we wouldn't exist. We wouldn't be able to do things like this. So first off, we want to just thank Curtis Stokes and Associates. Curtis Stokes has been a longtime advertiser uh, with Spin Sheet, and uh, they actually uh, advertise in all of our publications. We uh, not only publish Spin Sheet, we publish Prop Talk and Fish Talk, three magazines uh, each monthly, 12 times a year, and Curtis Stokes has been a strong supporter of, of, of ours. Um, and if you're thinking about taking that plunge, Please go visit Curtis Stokes' website. Um, if if uh, you're looking for a nice liveaboard boat, they really have just a, an enormous uh, uh, inventory, if you will, of, of boats that um, are going to be perfectly suitable for living aboard. Um, and not only here in, in Maryland and, and on the Chesapeake, but from all over. Um, and as we are pivoting to social media and doing events like this, uh, Curtis Stokes is also able to do the same with uh, with doing virtual tours and doing video conferencing with their brokers. So anyhow, uh, again, it's a, a big shout out to Curtis Stokes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so here we are. Um, Molly, I'm going to bring in Molly, our esteemed editor. Um, oh, geez, I'm going to have trouble doing this. Hold on. Again, folks, I, if you've watched these things before, this is just slightly ahead of cable access. And um, with, not oh, jeez. So what that, what that means is I take no responsibility here whatsoever for, um, you know, for how this thing uh, unfolds. Um, let's see if I can actually get something done here. I can't. Okay. Then I'm just going to do this. I'm going to change now from the associate publisher of Spin Sheet to your official bartender. There we go. And uh, the first question we normally ask, and I'll ask Molly when I get her on the screen here, because I, I, I will get her on the screen, I promise, um, is what's she drinking? And um, I usually wait for her, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what I'm drinking. Um, so, um, Unfortunately, it is the, what is it, the 8th today? And uh, we don't, our happy hour did not fall on Cinco de Mayo. Um, and, uh, and I usually do out and I like to, I have a minor tradition of trying to do a shot of tequila. Tequila for me is one of those drinks that I had in college that didn't always sit very well. And uh, I try to avoid for the most part, but I do appreciate a good tequila. Um, and so I actually have two tequilas with me tonight. Um, one is something that I, a friend gave me uh, for a birthday. And it's one of those tequilas that they're like one of the best tequilas um, from like GQ magazine or something stupid like that. But anyway, it's expensive and I'm glad I didn't have to pay for it. But it's, they call it a sipping tequila, whatever that means. Um, and then this tequila I actually purchased um, in Mexico, so it's the real deal, um, and I probably overpaid for it because they told me it's like, oh, it's like ten thousand pesos, and I'm like, oh, that's like eight dollars. Um, but I remember getting a credit card statement after that, and it was wasn't eight bucks. Um, 
that's, uh, that's my fault, not theirs. Um, so anyway, I figured this one was suitable for shooting and the other one is suitable for sipping, which I'll do when I'm off screen. Um, but anyhow, a uh, shot of tequila, everybody, in, in uh, celebration of Cinco de Mayo. Um, I'll be totally honest with you. It has been a long time since I did a shot of just about anything. Um, so I'm hoping it'll throw up on live internet TV. Um, but we're going to see. Um, and uh, But I do have a little thing of salt. which is against doctor's orders these days, but I don't care. And... Uh, uh, I, you know, I even I even forgot. Is it lemon or lime that I'm supposed to have? I grabbed a lemon. That's all I have. So, anyhow, um, but the the lick it, slam it, suck it tradition is going to continue um, in my late forties, I guess. Um, so anyway, I'm I'm, I'm I'm let me back up a little bit. There we go. So there's my stall. I got my shot and my and my thing of uh, lemon ready to go. So, cheers, everybody. Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo. Smooth. It's really smooth. It's very good. I might have another. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to hide myself, so maybe I can grab Molly to come. All right. First, I'm actually, in order for me to do this, I'm going to do things out of sequence. And that means, Amanda and Paul, you're coming up on the screen. And... Let's see. Hey, Amanda and Paul. Hooray, hi. How, How are you doing? Cheers. <laughs> oh, we lost him again. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> are we? Well, I suppose we should chat about uh, what we're drinking. Um, we have uh, the local Dundalk uh, Brewery Key uh, with their all days off, because that's, that's how it is. Hello. We're <laughs> and we got Mary, we got me. Hold on. I can do this. I can do this, people. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to have to screw up for the later part of the show and get this going. Hold on. Next up is Cindy Wallach. Cindy. Hello. And last but not least, gosh, I'm embarrassed. It's the tequila talking, people. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. There we go. First of all, I'm impressed with the tequila. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I like to be on screen with Shire for just a moment, just because we're friends, and I'm impressed that he's drinking tequila. But, um, for a minute there, Amanda and Paul, I see you're drinking a beer, a local Dundalk beer. Can you can you tell me what one it is again? I couldn't quite hear that. Oh, we went for the um, all days off. It is oh. <laughs> sort of a theme around here. Very nice. And, and Mary, what are you drinking there from Port Annapolis? Um, I made a, a foghorn, which is ginger beer, um, gin, and lime. Pretty simple. Very nice. How is it I've never heard of that drink? Uh, I just looked it up the other day, and it's oh. one of your favorite drinks. <laughs> Delicious. Very <laughs> good. Like those were the only ingredients I had. <laughs> Cindy, what are you drinking over there? I have a Cure Royale in my Happy Tiki Cup. Yes, which Sharp commented earlier that reminded him of that Brady Bunch episode with the yeah. bad luck <laughs> them there from Hawaii. I bought it on the roadside for 25 cents, so uh -huh. it's a treasure. It's Greg's good luck charm. If you if you guys are, uh -oh. oh, we lost Amanda. We lost Amanda. Hopefully, Amanda will come back. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll tell you what I'm drinking out of my um my spin sheet cup here. Um, I have to admit, I'm not very exciting. It's just a Mount Gay and tonic with some lime. Oh, nice. And, uh, but it seemed like a refreshing thing to drink. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was drinking a little red wine last night, and um, I just knew red wine was not the way I was going to go today. So. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I stuck with something summary. Are Amanda and Paul in the green room? They're they're coming back. I think I'm 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 watching for them. I I do want to just comment. I just had an Annapolis moment. 
Um, and uh, an Annapolis moment is is uh, just one of these strange things that happens uh, because we live in this small town. Um, basically, my neighbor, who's my landlord, um, it obviously is watching this program right now. And when I said I didn't have any limes, I got a knock on the door and he came over with some limes. So um, <laughs> I have some lime um, and, uh, and I poured another shot. So I just uh -oh. I got to do another shot, right? Because that's what he said. Well, I, you know, anyway, thank you, Kevin. Um, if you, if, uh, Kevin Brooks, Eastport, Eastport, Eastport Oyster Boy. Oyster Boys. Um, oh, God, Sharb. So you got to worry about this throwing up thing on uh, on Facebook Live, although that would bring our ratings up considerably. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> but we're it, it worried about viral. you being the I don't producer. Know. Yeah, it might go viral. We're worried about you being the producer and doing shots. Where's your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Which is really a good question to Why? ask at any time. <laughs> <laughs> is it better with the lime? Yeah, actually. And it, I, I just shot this sipping tequila, so it's a lot easier on my. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, um, Paul and Amanda are back. Hold on, hi guys. Hold on one second. I'm I'm stealing the show here as I typically do, but let's see. Boom. Bye, Sharb. Bye. It's been a while. Here they come. And yeah. and they're back. Hi, Amanda and Paul. Hi. If um if you have connectivity problems, you know, moving forward, this happened to me one time. Sometimes you fade out mm -hmm. and then you need to refresh and come back. If it gets bad, we could we could always do it by phone. You could call Sharb and we could do speaker phone thing. But um but so um let's let's launch into our questions. The people here are watching because they want to know a little bit about the liveaboard life. I know we have some liveaboards watching too. They they know about it and they're supportive and they just want to hear what you guys have to talk about. So um so anyway, we're going to um we either go from north to south or south to north tonight. We're going to start with south. Um, the southernmost liveaboard on tonight's program, anyway, is Cindy Wallach, who's currently living on the South River. So, Cindy, I'm going to ask you if you could tell us a bit about your sailing experience, sort of from ground zero to becoming a liveaboard in, uh, in, you know, a minute or less. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, I started sailing when I was a child on Lake Michigan. I had a, a neighbor who let me use her sun fish and let me take it out and figure it out on my own. And I was probably 10 ish years old. And then um, I definitely caught the bug. And when I came to college in DC, I found my way to Annapolis and found my way to a race boat on Wednesday night and started doing that. Um, and then eventually after reading the book Maiden Voyage, shifted from racing to cruising and um, met my now husband, then boyfriend, as we were both separately shopping for boats to live on. And we started dating and we realized if we put our resources together, we could buy a much nicer boat than we could separate. So we jumped in while we were dating and bought a boat together. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> so um, so I have, I have one question on, uh, based on what you said that, uh, there was an omission there in your story. And I think a lot of our, our listeners here would like to know where exactly it is that you Good. met your husband. So we can oh. use the audio. We met at Marmaduke's, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought some people would want to know. That, you and talk about an Annapolis moment, meeting your husband at Marmaduke's, Absolutely. that's old school. That yeah. is old and school. And it's our wedding anniversary. Um, so, and we Today, are. Yeah, we've been a oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> He's hopefully out getting dinner. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have been, this is our, we've been living aboard uh, 22 years. Wow, that's cool. Okay, <laughs> great. Let me ask Mary the same question. What, what brought you, and Mary, by the way, is in, in Annapolis on Back Creek. And Mary, what brought you into sailing up to the point where you became a liveaboard? Yeah, so I um, just bought my boat about a year and a half ago, and that's when I first started sailing. Um, to get into it, I, how many years ago was that? Probably like three or four years ago. Um, one of my friends uh, invited me to um, 
to go sailing in the Bahamas with her aunt and uncle. And they were liveaboards in the Bahamas. And that experience really made me want to live aboard. And so I'm basically just learning on the fly. And how long has it been? How long has it been for you now? Um, a year and a half. And uh, and what kind of boat do you live on? Um, I live on a 26 foot S2. It's the 8.0 A. Yeah. And I got wow, on a couple. Um, or 26. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, a couple, like I got on a couple race teams um, this summer, and they've invited me back if it's going to happen. Um, so I'm really excited about learning more yeah well that is exciting well well welcome to annapolis welcome to liveaboard life and cindy i forgot to ask you i know you're um you're a catamaran girl what kind of boat do you and your family live on currently yes so we we are on a saint francis 44 which is a south african catamaran it's myself my husband i have a almost 16 year old son a nine-year-old daughter and a dog and other pets rotate in and out as they come we've had <laughs> mice and chickens and hamsters yeah. and guinea pigs and anything else on this boat. I have noticed you have some random pets over the years. If Cindy's name sounds familiar to you guys, it's because she is a longtime writer for Spin Sheet. And I still remember my discovery of Cindy. I was reading Sail Magazine and there was a one page article on Destination Annapolis. And I rolled my eyes and thought, oh, Destination Annapolis, I wonder how they did on that. And then I read it and said, well, this is actually quite good. Who wrote this? It's really somebody who knows what the heck they're talking about. And she put a lot into a, a small space. Who is Cindy Wallach? And I found her. I don't remember how. And I sent her a note saying, why isn't that you're not writing for Spin Sheet? And she said, I don't know. Why isn't that I'm not writing for Spin Sheet? And it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship that's well over 10 years ago at this point. Yeah. Okay. So happy, happy to have you up on screen. You know, Cindy's, Cindy's been one of our... Um, really dedicated uh, writers. It's just so easy to work with. Always a pleasure to work with. And whenever she talks about going cruising, I always tear up a little like, it's okay, I'd be excited for you to go cruising, but I'm always, I'm always a little worried about Nobody's it. Nobody's going anywhere now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so Amanda and Paul, welcome. You guys are up in Baltimore, and I know you have different routes in sailing and becoming um, a live aboard couple. So in any order that you guys want to tell us, why don't you tell us a bit about your sailing experience and how you came to be coming, you know, to being live aboards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Perfect. Great. So we, uh, so we, um, uh, came about it two different ways. One is that, um, no, it is not. No, it's not. It's right here. Thanks so much. I got it. <laughs> Yay. So um, I uh, started out as a tall ship sailor. Um, that was, I, I worked on a bunch of different schooners, Liberty Clipper, um, Schooner Roseway, uh, the Schooner Hindu, uh, Schooner Summer Wind here in Baltimore, um, nice. and the, the, the good and splendid Sloop Clearwater up in uh, <laughs> New York. Um, uh, and, and so before we actually moved on this boat, I had been living full time on all those boats right in order for five years. Um, so living out of whatever, a three foot by eight foot bunk for all that time. So it wasn't mm -hmm. too much downsizing for me, but, but yeah, I come from that background. Paul is definitely much more a uh, DIY. He was living aboard <laughs> um, his own boat for about 12 years before we moved aboard this boat together. Um, I can let him tell you more about that. Well, just um, <clears throat> these days we work remotely, work from home. Uh, almost everyone is who, who can anyway. And um, but I've been doing that for a very long time. And sometimes maybe everyone is starting to has learned this that like if you're on a Zoom call or a conference call and it's just not something that you're working on or something you're doing, you kind of just look around the internet and kind of you know um, like if it wasn't the item that you were leading or that you're not supposed to weigh in on something, then so I'm like, oh, look at here. There's a sailboat on eBay for hardly any money. I'm just going to look at there. I, I made a bid, and 15 minutes later, I'm the owner of a 30-foot sailboat. So it's a 30, that was in 2005. That 30-foot sailboat is sitting right next to the houseboat. So we're a, a two-yacht family. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun to take that, take that boat all over the place. We had to upgrade to this little houseboat um, when... Um, my fabulous fiance had made the 
unfortunate decision for her to uh, to to get engaged to me. Wow, that's cool. So um, I actually want to. Um, what did I'm, I'm trying to to think? You you were just explaining that right now, and I got a text in the middle of it. Did you did you um, oh, so you upgraded for boat to live with your fiance? Is that how that went? Right. So he was living aboard a little 30 foot sailboat and um, I was coming back to Baltimore after we got in, well, after we you know, got serious and, and decided to move in together. Um, so, <laughs> so, so I also had seen the 30 foot sailboat and um, so we made a plan for a different idea um, <laughs> to, for together. Um, yeah. And we moved into an apartment briefly, and then this boat just. Uh, oh, that's true. That's a good detail that we were like, oh, well, you know, this sailboat's just not big enough, so we're going to go get a land apartment. And we did. It's like, it sucked. It was uh, <laughs> right. $1,600 uh, a month. And so we started, the, um, and we just got totally lucky. This was the first boat that we actually went down to see off of, again, Craigslist. And <laughs> wow. We totally got lucky. <laughs> totally got lucky. Yeah. Wow, that's really yeah. cool. But again, having lived aboard for so long, we knew the things to look out for, um, what not to buy and, and what to buy. So we we knew this was sort of a um this was this was a, a jackpot. So we we were able to go for it. But well I wanted to ask our other two guests if they had gotten rid of land dwellings, whether it was a sale of a house or um or just moving out of an apartment, just sort of giving away your land. Some people keep their land dwelling in case they might change their mind on the whole of the board thing. So I just wondered how Mary and uh, and Cindy were in that. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah, um, I didn't have any property to sell. Um, I was living with six people in a house before this, so it was perfect timing. Oh. So that's an easy, that's an easy transition. Yeah. How, how about you, oh, Cindy? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was, I don't know, very young <laughs> at the time. So we basically went from like a like a college apartment kind of situation onto a boat. Um, mm -hmm. We never owned a house. We uh, had a party right before we moved onto the boat. We called it the Everything Must Go Party. And hey. we would come and drink and take everything except the dog and our music collection. And then uh, we just took our backpack and with everything we had and walked to the boat and moved on. Mm -hmm. and well, was, you know, that was a smaller man, a PDQ 36 at the time before kids. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I didn't, um, you know, I, 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 we pulled this together sort of at the last minute because we knew we wanted to do something about liveaboard. So, but we didn't, we didn't choose you guys because you were, you know, this demographic or that demographic. It was more like, oh, she's a friend of a friend. She's in. She's a friend of a friend. She's in. So, but. You are an unusual crowd in that you all didn't have to do a whole lot of downsizing of stuff. Um, you must live on the dock with some people who sold their house or rented their house out or put all their stuff into storage units. What are some yeah. of the other liveaboards around you? What are Does anyone think of a story of a good friend of yours of, of having to get rid of a lot of stuff and that being a big life changer? Um, yeah, I have a neighbor that's um, in the process. He owns property now and he's retired um, and has to keep going back to take care of the lawn um, and that sort of thing. So he's yeah. he's definitely like ready to sell it. Yeah. How about you, Cindy? Can you think of anyone who's made a major life transition like that who you know of? We meet people, you know, every day who are selling out um, their houses and downsizing to move on and it, it seems frantic i'm so glad we didn't have to go through that it just seems like it's a very stressful time um and then we know a lot of liveaboards who, who keep and who have kept large storage places or who have a winter house or something um we we like to say that we have everything we own is in this floating fiberglass tub we've never had a storage space um except for the back yeah. of the cars mm -hmm. How about you guys? The rest of you, do you have do you have storage spaces and or some sort of storage capability at your marinas? One of our um, one of our listeners did ask the question um, whether you guys were on the hook or at marinas, and you guys are all at marinas, if I am not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. marina. Mm -hmm. So, Cindy, how about you? You don't have a storage unit. Do you have any storage capabilities at your marina? Uh, not. At I don't think we have one at the current marina. We, we just changed marinas recently. Um, mm -hmm. There were some, some marinas offer it. I think Port Annapolis does, right? 
Mary? Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of storage units here. Several of my friends have units. Um, I just, my parents live nearby, so I just leave my stuff at their house. It's very yeah, nice. nice. To do that. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, the parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're really I, I, good at giving stuff away. A lot of times it's just, it hasn't been used in six months, it goes out the door. And I constantly yeah. give them ways, bringing things to thrift shops, mm -hmm. you know, giving them the yeah. funds. Yeah. It was interesting to kind of to downsize from a great big house, like a group house with a lot of friends to a very small sailboat. Um, and about 10 years later, they all that stuff that was in the basement, they said, would you please get your stuff out finally? <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. you know, but the weird thing is, um, or maybe interesting thing for people to consider moving aboard is I didn't miss it or even think of it. And when I went back to the basement, I just threw most of it out, really. I can't tell you about, about you know, I've been interviewing uh, live aboards or people who are live aboards just for a spell, maybe people who go cruising for a year or two. And I always ask them about their stuff. It, you know, it's something I'm curious about. And so many of them tell me that story, that they put stuff in boxes, they paid for a storage unit, they put it there and they got back from their adventure and they pulled it out and they laughed. And what was Why this? on earth did we what pay money to store this? We yeah. haven't thought about it. We didn't even remember what was in the boxes. And it's really kind of an interesting study because on the other side, you know, land dwellers think, Oh, I want to live on a boat someday, but oh, I love this bookcase and I love this chair and what would I do with my five bikes and my extra car and and that sort of thing. And, and they look at your lifestyle and say, wow, you guys must be serious minimalists. Do you I, consider, I say, do you consider yourself minimalist? I do not consider myself a minimalist. I mean, oh. I guess compared to a, a typical suburban family of four in a house, we probably look pretty minimalist. Like we could probably fit all of our possessions into someone's dining room. However, uh, I think um, as a mom, uh, I get very, look at all the toys there. Yeah, I get, I get, um, I get nostalgic about baby things, you know, and that's hard to let go of. And I, um, we definitely have too many books. And um, I know Kindles are a great thing, but we have piles and baskets of books all over the place. And we want to try to give our kids, like you see there, that's, that's our Christmas setup. Um, and we like to try to give them like as, you know, as quote unquote normal a life as possible and have traditions and have, you know, celebrations. And so we try to keep, um, you know, fun things around to make holidays special and birthdays special. So while, while we don't have a lot of stuff, we are not minimalist. I always feel like this boat is packed to the gills. Yeah. How about the rest of you? Do you consider yourself minimalists? Five, five I, bikes sitting on our bow right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but um, the funny thing is, I sent you a picture of our fish tank and our bookshelf. And one, so, one of our bookshelves. One of our bookshelves. So, so no, I we we don't. It's um we are, but we are just like Cindy said, just kind of um, offloading things in a in a rotating thing. And we keep trying to talk to our families about. I know that you want to get us Christmas presents. But you Please shouldn't don't. get us Christmas presents at all. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Mary, go ahead. Oh, you're fine. Um, I would consider myself a minimalist, definitely working on it. <laughs> um, living in such a small space, um, I've gotten really good at just trying to get rid of things that um, I no longer need or no longer like, like clothes that I don't like as much. Um, mm -hmm. And just trying to... Um, I guess just pare things down is has been really I really enjoy it. Um, I, I try and use like my storage area just for my winter my winter stuff like right now. Um, like I do a lot of outdoor sports, so like I have a snowboard and like all this all these random out gears out outdoor gears like supplies that um, I don't have room to store on the boat. Um, but I yeah I consider myself a minimalist. It's it's definitely been hard in um, with like grocery shopping in the pandemic, I find, um, cause I'm so used to just going to the grocery store once a week or like whenever I feel like it, you know, to just get whatever I want to eat for dinner. And like the stockpiling food is really weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or we not stockpiling, have, but having, you know, <laughs> storage of food. We only have 47 house plants. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, we pared down. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So um, I'm gonna let's let's start up in Baltimore for this question. I, I wanted to ask uh, Amanda and Paul. Sort of, what are the three things you love most 
about living on a boat? But, um, so I, I, I kind of want to show you. I don't know if you guys can see our, our view. We have yeah, the, a little bit the same exact view as the um, as the Pendry. Um, oh gosh, it won't adjust the light, but it's fine. It looks um, so we we call it our our five thousand dollar boat with a million dollar view. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's great. Super awesome. So that's that's really nice to see up um, fresh air and and a nice view. And um, we, uh, God, what's the next best thing? I like the freedom knowing that when the zombies come or pandemics hit or whatever, you can put up sail and get out. Like next to this uh, little houseboat is that 30 foot sailboat with the big solar panel on it and all this. And so it just, mm -hmm. it's um, like we've loved the world and want to support everyone getting healthy and taking care and for good things to happen. But when the zombies come, it somehow is a relief to know that you can always sail out if you need to. So, you know, you are not the first uh, cruising sailor to talk about zombies to me. <laughs> what, I, what I actually mean is, you know, the, the freedom thing. to go it's explore so under your own sailors. power, explore under your own power, just the freedom. And, you know, just in case zombies. <laughs> How about Cindy? Tell me three things you love about living on a boat. Oh, maybe we should ask Mary. I oh. see Mar Mary's up here. We can, let's keep everybody on here for a sec, so that, we have a couple of short questions. And I feel like there's a little lag in between. Um, Cindy, what are three things you love about living on a boat? Uh, I think for me, the community is the biggest thing that's kept us uh, doing this for 22 years. Um, it's just you always have such a sense of uh, community and that if you need something, your neighbors are always there. And, and especially having kids, it's, it's very much that kind of like old fashioned childhood that everyone longs for where, you know, the kids are looked after and um, they have lots of kind of, you know, auntie and uncle figures that they can go to. Um, and then being close to nature is a big one for me. Um, I like, you know, watching the geese go by, uh, watching the moon rise like we got to last night, which was pretty phenomenal. Uh, you know, I'm a big sucker for a good sunset. Um, you know, we named the fish, we named the ducks. <laughs> we kind of get really, you know, bizarrely close to the osprey and the herons. Um, yep. So that's part of it. Um, and then I just like to sail. You know, I'm one of those little boards that actually really enjoy sailing. So, um, you know, we, of course, we don't get out as much as we'd like to. We definitely try to go during the season, you know, at least one or two times a month. But I just like sailing to sail. Great. I'm going to ask Mary the same question, and then we're going to um, take a couple questions from the audience. And by the way, Cindy, you happen to answer one of the audience questions by um, talking about your kids and their enjoyment of it. They want to know how the kids enjoyed it. And I, I don't know, your kids always seem to be in heaven when I when I come across them. So they have a great life. So how about you, Mary? Have three things, three things you love about living on a boat. And you're pretty good. I would definitely, I know, I would say everything Cindy said already. Um, uh, nature is definitely a huge reason. Um, like we've been tracking an otter around here the last few um, few weeks, I think now. Yeah, which is really fun. Uh, we've gotten really close to it a couple times, um, which is awesome. Uh, I love I love learning new things as well. Um, so like getting to know my boat and like fixing everything has been really great, and learning how to sail and everything's been just I love learning. So that, that's a huge part for it too. Um, and the community is great. Um, everyone's so friendly and helpful and checks in on you. It's really yeah. nice to have that. That is a nice thing, is especially in a snowstorm, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that we had any this year, but I think I we have a question, question from the audience. There you go. Uh, the, everyone here works remotely. Does anyone have oh. a land job? Um, let's um, let's go from let's go from south to north again. We'll start with you, Cindy. So um, my husband has a land job. He works for the government, so he has to commute. When there's no pandemic, he usually has to commute. Now he's working from home. Um, I work remotely. Um, so my my job, when I'm not writing for Spin Sheet, I produce and write television shows. So 90% um, of that I can do from home. Um, and then I'm required to travel You know, when I'm not uh, doing it from here. So as long as I have Wi-Fi, I can work. How about you, Mary? I have a land job as well um, and working from home right now during the pandemic. Yeah, How, how's that going in the 26 foot boat? Uh, it's going pretty well. Um, 
we also have like a lounge here. Um, so I've used that space a little bit um, when it was really windy. Um, that was very helpful. <laughs> but besides that, it's it's been fine. Um, I like made myself a standing desk, uh, got a table. Yeah, it's, it's good. That's great. And, and how about you, Amanda? So I had been commuting for a job. I had been working on boats um, up until about a year ago. So, and then I started working remotely and Paul has always worked remotely. Um, but one of the things that we were lucky about with this um, Safer at Home is um, it happened during springtime because a thing that people might not think about who don't live aboard boats is the plumbing out the docks to your boat is shut off from November to April. So you can't actually shower on board. And so Paul made a, a really impassioned plea to our marina that um, it was much safer that these showers were going to pretty quickly become a you know a um, vector. <laughs> um, and so they they were able. To, it also it was a super warm winter, and so we were able to turn the plumbing back on so we can shower and everything right on board. And so yeah, we're both working from home and and staying on board, um, uh, totally full time. It's it was it's we're lucky. Is there I tried to have a remote job or one you can commute to by bicycle, but um, <laughs> after yeah. that, it's too much. To answer someone's questions in the chat, yes, we do still have a car. We we do. Um, it's a grocery store. It's a rattle trap. But we have two yeah. cars. Well, that was that was the next question, uh, and I <laughs> oh. and, and I forgot to uh, kind of put in there, guys. Um, uh, if we use your question, you get an AMG insurance Yeti mug. A nice Yeti mug, yes. By the way, I'm just saying, if you don't have a Yeti mug, you're missing out. So, uh, Eileen, you get a Yeti mug. Congrats. Yeah. Didn't Eileen get a mug last time? No. I hope. I don't think so. Um, I, I get, um, guess. Uh, yeah, Sharp, no. would you like to put up another question from the audience? Because I. Well, Moby Richard. Oh, yeah. Moby already asked that one. And Mary, you have a car, right? I have a car. Yep. Okay. So. Everybody has cars, and what do you do with them when cruising? Can anyone? I know Cindy's qualified to answer that question. Yeah, when we when we went cruising um, uh, when we were younger <laughs> on a different boat than this one, um, we donated one car, and the other one we put it to sleep and parked it in the very back of Port Annapolis and hoped for the best. <laughs> yeah, and that's, we, that's what one of my friends did. <laughs> yeah, and we came back and it started. You know, a uh, year year plus later, so we were grateful for that. Sharp, did you want to put up another question or should I choose one that appealed to me? Oh, well, definitely. <laughs> Whatever appeals to you, Molly. Well, the one that appealed to me is by um, by our friend Heidi Frist here. How often do you sail and how quickly can you get underway? Uh, well, being the catamaran person, we can get underway fairly quickly. And that's, we probably, uh, we have so much stuff, toys and things out. Um, and we, uh, yeah, <laughs> more stuff than we should have out. Um, and we try to go, we don't, we're kind of weather wimps. I'll admit, we do not like to sail when it's cold. Uh, we're not the sort to bundle up and, and take one in January just for the sport of it. Um, so we only sail during the season and we try to go out, you know, a couple times a month. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mary? Um, I'm just starting to sail my boat this season. So can't really answer that question yet. <laughs> Stand by for an answer there. Yeah. <laughs> and it seems that you guys can take off awfully quickly since you're not actually living on the sailboat. Yeah. The, yeah, so yeah, the sailboat is is pretty easy if, if we decide to go out um, sailing that, that evening. It's um it's all, all set and ready to go. The uh, houseboat is, again, I'll reference the picture that I sent you with the fish tank. So we're not really <laughs> sea stowed on the houseboat. <laughs> so that'd probably take quite a bit of time if we wanted to put her underway again. She's been underway with us um, one time and, and I feel like that's good. But the sailboat, the sailboat, um, yeah, we, I, I, even when Paul was living aboard um, um, by himself from when we were dating, we, we took it out pretty often with friends. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. That's great. So I have a question. Um, you know, we've talked about the live aboard life like it's oh so easy with the exception of the, um, the winter showering bit. Um, what are some of the challenges of the live aboard life? Let's go ahead and start up there in Baltimore. Challenges. 
I think you put them in the back of your mind. <laughs> oh, um, um, uh, um, on a on a breezy day, we're pretty exposed. Um, when there is, uh, um, there are some boats we won't mention their name specifically, but they go really quickly in the harbor when they're out and touring, and so we get waked pretty often. There've been there was one time Paul was um, uh, uh, doing some work from bed and had to go from from laying down to standing to holding our fish tank. <laughs> with, uh, with just, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Uh, so so we're 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 pretty exposed um, where where we are. Um, Baltimore is like naturally a pretty protected harbor, but if the wind is out of the south for a few days, um, really heavy. We are rocking and rolling, so we're um, checking our dock lines and fenders all the time, and and yeah, um, yeah we uh, 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 yeah, that's that's gonna let you guys not know. a great lifestyle for someone who experiences motion sickness. So. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about you, Mary? What are some of the challenges that you've seen thus far? Um, I'd say the winter, like when the dock is pretty icy or could get icy, um, that's pretty challenging. Um, when the tide gets really low is pretty challenging or really high <laughs> it's not too bad but um it definitely is a learning curve um but you find like little ways to get around it um and when it's really windy um like the worst the worst thing for me would be like it's really windy and my my front line's creaking and i'm trying to sleep um <laughs> in the middle of winter. And I'm like, I don't want to go out and adjust it or try it. I've heard of a, a tip where you can put um, soap on it and then um, what? you put dish soap and then wet it. Apparently it gets the creaking to go away. What? I need to ping you yeah. later for more information. <laughs> cool. I once, it worked pretty well. <laughs> and hey, hey Molly, we have got a question from Greg that's kind of asking a winter question. I'm glad we brought it up. Oh yeah. Oh good. And just talk about insulation on your boats. I mean, oh, that can be an yeah. important factor. Well, go um, ahead. I can, oh. oh, go ahead, Mary. You go. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of. I've got this lovely headliner. It's um like a carpet material, so that is pretty like insulates it pretty well. Um, and then I just have a um, oh, what kind of heater is that? Um, a like an electric heater. Um, not propane or anything like that. Um. I actually heard of a woman that she just got uh, CO2 po poisoning, um, carbon monoxide poisoning the other day um, with a propane heater. So I'd recommend not using that. Um, and mine mine is like a, a low profile one. Um, so it doesn't, it's, you know, like there's the really tall um, electric heaters. This one's very compact. So it doesn't, it really doesn't get in the way. I just move it. Um, I have like kind of like a storage spot for it and then put it out in the middle of, um, of the walkway. So it works great. I don't have an issue with the heat. It's actually the number one question I get. <laughs> yeah, how about you, Cindy? I know how much you love winter. Not so much, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so no. <laughs> I'm trying to escape. We've got 22 winters aboard. And in the beginning, we just we just didn't know what we were doing. And so sure. it's been, um, you know, figured out as you go. Now we shrink wrap, which is, which like once we started shrink wrapping the boat, in a clear shrink wrap, we said, why didn't we always shrink wrap the boat? So we have this big, we call it the bubble, but it's like a tent over the boat. So it gives us the greenhouse effect. We stay warmer, we stay drier, it turns the cockpit into an extra room. Um, and we've just, we have reverse cycle um, heat and air conditioning, which works until the bay gets really cold and then we use electric heaters. Um, and we've insulated strategically under the mattresses and in some of the lockers, you know, where our clothes are. Um, and we've learned to always just, no matter how cold it is, to keep some of the hatches cracked, to keep some airflow moving in that way that uh, cuts down on the condensation. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then, uh, and then uh, we usually leave. <laughs> and then she goes to Hawaii and visits her dad. So my, dad, my husband stays here all winter, but my parents live somewhere tropical. So I often go, oh, it's getting cold. Time to go see mom and dad. The, the other answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about you, Amanda and Paul? What, how does winter look for you? Any extra insulation or anything? Anything no, that people ask you about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um we so because um houseboats in particular are really susceptible to weird condensation and and like you have to watch out for mold <laughs> even more than on a normal boat. Um, yeah. we uh we do yeah I before I decided to um uh, be near Paul year round yes I was just in October going south but um but uh we are are doing just the normal house stuff which is plastic on the windows and 
we go through um, a lot of electricity on our electric heaters and, and we'll run um, propane heaters. This winter was super mild, but um, our house boats are, are weird just because it's like a greenhouse. So from, uh, you know, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., it's beautiful. And then the rest of the time, it's like totally it may be 30 different. degrees out, but we'll open have to open the windows a little bit. <laughs> it's right. So, it's yeah. so much sun. But, the, the sailboat was living aboard, lived in, aboard the sailboat <laughs> in Boston. Um, but yeah. <laughs> over winter, and it was like one of those that terrible winter of all that snow. And, uh, but I always yeah. wanted to keep the sailboat ready to go. So, you know, when you're there, you know, I usually ran electric heaters on low when I was away to make sure that nothing would ever freeze. And then I try to keep around some propane for when you're on board and CO2. Uh, <laughs> you have to have the CO2 monitors for sure. Yeah, that's um, all about um, but just, it, it, but it, the sailboat, I mean, a lot of actual cruising boats are pretty small inside, so it's not that hard to heat them. They, it's a little bit kind of over, people worry a lot more than you need to about getting cold. You have to worry about yeah. water um, a lot during winter, but but the heat is not really that hard. It's true. So um, a local liveaboard couple, um, Cindy Fletcher Holden and her husband, Robert, have been interviewed many times, even by me. And I remember Cindy responding to a question, or, or I asked her, what are some of the goofy questions that people ask you about your lifestyle? And she said that people, besides asking, how do you keep warm in the winter, asked, what do you eat? And as if she and her husband just heat up dinty more beef stew over a little camping stove or something. And meanwhile, she cooks a full Thanksgiving feast for you know six to eight people. So I just wanted to ask you guys, and let, let's start with you, Cindy, sort of, what do you eat? <laughs> what, what do you eat on your boat of what? What do you cook? Are you, are you, are you cooking people? And Well, we're feeding a teenage boy right now. So and a have, tall one. Yeah, yeah, he's 6'2". We, we have a huge freezer on this boat, and it's one of the things that sold us on our boat. We call it the two dead body freezer, because you could put <laughs> stuff in there. So um, we just eat regular things that <laughs> families eat. I, I don't like to cook, and people always say, oh, you don't like to cook because you live on a boat. And I always say, no, I just don't like to actually. Cook. <laughs> it wouldn't matter where I live. But but we still do three times a day for the kids. You know, they have bagels or cereal or fruit for breakfast and typical lunch and dinner. And we make lasagnas. We've made Thanksgiving dinner. When we buy our Thanksgiving turkey, we go to the supermarket with a tape measure because it's not the weight of the turkey, but the proportions of the turkey that matter. So we've done that before where we said we need a nine inch by 13 inch turkey. <laughs> That's what we're after. Um, so but yeah, but we've done, you know, we've done all the regular foods that you would have on them on the boat with three burners and a tiny little oven. So Mary, how are, how's your galley on that little boat? How does it work for you? It works pretty well. Um, I have an alcohol stove and I love cooking, so I cook everything. I made um, tuna steaks the other day. Uh, what else? I love like like cold pasta is good with tomatoes. Um, that's a good one. Yeah, anything. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I made cinnamon rolls the other day and I don't have an oven, so. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> You're, you were, uh, wait, how did this What? How? How? You basically steam them. So you just, um, I take a, like a pot and then I have, um, I have an instant pot, but I don't really use it. Um, and it comes with this little like raised like shelf thing. So I put that on and it's metal. The so water on the bottom, put the shelf in, and then I put a um, spring form pan and then throw them in. And then I don't even check to see how long. I just keep looking every now and then. It, were it was delicious. Really coming closer and closer to your boat, like oh, oh everyone oh, asked me for them. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good. Hey, Molly, oh, you you cast a... the galley on that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Sharb. What was that? I'm just. I'm sorry, but uh, Bill Burr has been very active on here, and I just he's got the, you know, I think it's uh, the obligatory question, and that is, does anybody have a composting toilet on board? Oh, <laughs> um, um, we've got a composting oh. toilet. All right, tell us about it. It was a hard sell for Paul. I was, I was, I was pushing for it, um, pretty hard. Uh, he, well, I'll let him tell you whether he's come around or not. But um, I had worked only on commercial boats or boats that saw, um, you know, twenty-eight students a day 
uh, and so I never, ever, 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 ever wanted to see Blackwater Plumbing again because I spent a lot of time <laughs> opening it up. Right. So, so I was um, totally sold. I, I dragged him to a tiny house show, and we got the floor model from the dude for you know <laughs> whatever. I was I wanted it uh, right away, and um, we're still working out how it how it. I love it. I'll stop talking. <laughs> And, and, yeah. and, and Paul, why are you not sold yet? If, if, if it's not sort of, you can go ahead and be graphic. It's a bunch of sailors. We're always talking about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, when it was just me and on my sailboat, it would almost, unless you're offshore, you would just really never poop on board. Um, you know, and, and I have just, you know, kept up with that. There was even some very affordable marinas around Baltimore without, that don't have bathrooms. I'm like, nope. Not gonna poop on board. So, but now in times of quarantine, I finally just kind of sucked it up, sucked it up. You you could go poop in the marina, but you'll probably get infected and die. So I have come to accept a compost toilet. Um, and, and I agree that it is prob that is better than um, paying some guy to come around monthly for a pump out or, or you know, or going, having to go into, I, I think it's better to be, I think self-sufficiency and do it yourself is kind of a part of kind of live aboard and sailing culture in general. Like we should know how to take care of our own business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not as weird survivalist libertarians, but just as, you know, as folks who want to be able to take care of, you know, our own. Yeah. Right. Your own little world. world. So, so, so I'm excited about that of the composting toilet. <laughs> Speaking of obligatory questions, when it comes to the composting toilet, I mean, I don't necessarily think the head on an, an ordinary marine head smells good on most boats. How's the smell of the composting toilet? <laughs> it's, um, it has a, a motor that vents it straight out the side. So you should ask our neighbors, but we're... we're <laughs> <laughs> <It's> I, got... <laughs> I'd have to say it, it is in fact actually a and lot better. then you better. start making cinnamon buns. <laughs> <laughs> Just as reparations. Like, sorry about that last one. Here's it. Have another one. <laughs> it, it's true. It actually smells better. It, it really does. It. Um, I mean, that's a pretty low bar. Like a forest floor, as they advertise. <laughs> I'm not sure about all that, but it does. Okay, so this is disintegrated. It was my fault. We, we, we went down that path. That's exactly why I introduced the question. By the way. I know. Well, it's probably about last call time. Sharp, do you have? Do you have one more question? May I, May I ask? Um, can I? Can I ask one more question? I think you should go ahead, Molly. All right, let's see which one on my list am I gonna choose? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna combine two of them. So, and and we'll just ask everybody. We'll go we'll go north to south this time. So, uh, the question is, what do you wish more people knew about your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. And the second question is, when do you plan on moving back to land? Ooh. So we'll start with Amanda and Paul. What do you wish more people knew about your lifestyle? And when? Hoping we you get plan on moving back to land. Get answers first. <laughs> uh, what do you? Um, yeah, no, I think um, uh, uh, the the cold weather stuff was. We get a whole lot of presents of like blankets and scarves and um, cozy slippers and stuff because people think we're just like living in a tent in the woods, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. So um, it really is. It is like like um, uh, Mary and Cindy said. You can cook whatever you want and have live a normal life on board um i don't know what else what, what do you wish people knew if you want to spend more time doing the work in the world that you enjoy it's a very affordable way to to live yeah. in, and, and take care of yourself and your family it is um and the, uh, the other thing that mary kind of hinted at was like um uh, uh the people in uh, she didn't hint at it she said it the people in the <laughs> marina um really have your back and um, uh, if you are thinking about living aboard, join the forums, get to know the people in the marina, uh, really lean on other people. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. There's so much good knowledge out there and, and you'll have your answer within a day. It might not be the like easiest solution or whatever, but you can figure out how to do it. And, and there's people to, um, to give you good advice. So. Do you plan on moving back to land? No plans. No. Yeah. Oh. I kind of, I kind of knew you were going to say that. So, how about you, Mary? Where are you on that? Um, definitely being newer to the live aboard lifestyle um, and sailing in general, um, I would say the it's it's 
a lot of work. Um, and like most days aren't necessarily like if you're going to be new to um, the sailing or live aboard. Um, it definitely there's a lot of work to put in, um, but it's worth it. Um, and I don't know when I plan on moving uh, off the boat. <laughs> And uh, let's let's see your dog. We 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 only got a oh, little yeah. peek of your dog's head. Maybe you can introduce your dog. Oh, he's sleeping. <laughs> oh, he's oh, oh, hello. Okay. He's actually a foster dog, and he is available for adoption. If anyone is looking for a wonderful boat dog, he is. Oh, he loves he's a doll. He's so smart. He's Beautiful. a great dog. So Big dog in a small boat. <laughs> yeah. All right, Cindy, tell us what do you wish for? He's a little dog. Yeah. And you're you can show us your dog too too. I see is he yeah, still yeah. here? He's sitting right here in his little spot. He's hiding. <laughs> there you go, buddy. I choo um, too. I choo too. I guess um you know, I think people have this impression that we're camping, you know, and that, that somehow we're uh, that we're uncomfortable or we're lacking and and really mm -hmm. you have everything you need. Um the kids both of my kids, 15 and 9, have been born and raised in the boat. They came from the hospital to the boat, and this is the only home they've ever known. And oh. people say, well, how do you like it? Well, they don't have anything to compare it to. <laughs> so, um, you know, and they they have what they need. So I guess, like, that's just one of the things people think that it's, um, we're roughing it, um, but we're not. So, and, and we don't we don't have any plans to move to land. We don't know where or how that would happen. <laughs> I, think it would, I don't, I have trouble sleeping when I'm on land, when I go visit my parents or we travel. Hotel rooms are the worst. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't get a good night's sleep off the boat. So I'll stay here as long as I'm physically able to. Well, you guys have just been such great guests and I really appreciate your coming to happy hour with us. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. Yeah. Hopefully you have a you've inspired some people to check out your lifestyle and um, and see what it's all about. And thank you for that tip about the Liveaboard forums. I know there are a couple Liveaboard groups on Facebook, and uh, in fact, a friend was going to put the link up there. So which which is why I knew there were going to be some Liveaboards around besides the ones that I already knew. I think this is a good productive conversation. There are. A number of questions I didn't ask. We're probably going to follow this up with a different live aboard group. We had some people volunteer to be our guests, but for the um, first group, it's kind of cool. We have a we have a single person, we have a family of four with a dog living on a boat, and a couple. It's a nice sampling of uh, what's out there. It kind of goes um, against the. There's a little bit of a stereotype anyway that that everyone who lives on a boat is you know like a divorced guy, and. Um, <laughs> Not that there aren't a few of them out there. They're out there. But um, but it's nice to know that really there there are all kinds of people living on the docks and uh, and it's a really strong community. So thank you guys. Happy happy weekend to you. Thanks and, for uh, having uh, you guys. Thank you. I'm happy sailing. We're allowed to sail again. That's and, right. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you at one of these happy hours again soon. So yes. thank you, Molly. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm going to hide you guys. Feeling. Stick around in the right, green room. I think our is going to come back. Big, I'm not sure if it's going to party in the green room after this every time. So hold on. Um, uh, I'm just hiding everybody, and uh, I'm on. Hey. Hi. Very good, Molly. Thanks for a great job. I oh my gosh, it was a, they're so easy to talk to. I could I could talk to them for another hour, but I think that there is an attention span on Facebook Live, and we've probably reached the end of it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, well, I just I mean, I always enjoy these things, and I was I was saying to everybody before we went live, like this is the best part of my week. Like, this is just a lot of fun to kind of relax. It's the end of the week, obviously, but also just to to chat. Um, you know. Uh, before we get down to business, I, you know, again, just want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, and I hope, you know, the big news this week was obviously recreational boating in Maryland is open. And uh, unfortunately, the weather's not really cooperating. Um, I just was looking at a forecast and I think we're supposed to get three to five inches of snow and it's going to rain frogs tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so. Um, I'm sorry that that's going to spoil your weekend, but um, you know, uh, Mother's Day looks pretty nice. But Mother's Day is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so, anyway, thanks everybody for joining in. Um, Ma, I got to hide you because I got to show our sponsors. 
All right. <laughs> Um, but I do want to say thank you very much uh, once again uh, to Curtis Stokes um, for sponsoring this event. They, like I said before, um, if you're looking for a liveaboard boat, um, you know it it can be challenging to find the right boat. And Curtis Stokes is a great broker. Um, they've got a, a wide variety of boats out there. So check them out um, and tell them Spin Sheet sent you because that would really help us. Um, in addition to that, I just want to say congratulations to. I wrote these names down just in case. Um, uh, Eileen McCausland, Greg Guthman, and Bill Burr. You guys are going to win this beautiful, shiny, Yeti, uh, what do you call it? Tumbler. Yes, it's a tumbler. Um, and you obviously can fill that with any beverage of your choice. Um, but uh, we really appreciate you coming on board, um, engaging with our guests tonight. And uh, we really hope you join us again for our next happy hour, uh, which will be, oh my gosh, next week at five o'clock, just like it always is. Um, the subject matter to be determined because we really just kind of wing it these days. Um, so outside of that, I hope you uh, enjoyed this talk. Thanks again to our guests. And I wish you all a happy, healthy, and safe weekend and take care. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Don't miss another Spin Sheet video. Subscribe to our channel today.